Good morning. Welcome to Good Vibes. I'm Lisa Halk here with Dane Henning. Here I am. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Not too bad. How are you? Good. All right. Hey, why don't you tell everybody about the new membership drive we have going for February? Sure. Uh, we With our new membership drive that we have going on, uh, we had launched a new item, and that was our what we're what we're calling the legacy bag. Mm-hmm. And when you purchase one of those, you get a free membership along with that. So that's cool. It's pretty. Yeah. Like I just purchase a bag, and you get a membership along with that. So pretty cool deal, I think. Very nice. And personally. we had a lot of people ask about that bag because yeah. they were already members. Yeah. So now is your chance to be able to get that bag for we yourself or anybody else. And, and we haven't launched it on the pro shop yet. It's still nope. exclusive. Mm-hmm. Nobody can just go off and buy it. If you were a member currently, it's still, I mean, it's completely exclusive to non-members right now. So mm-hmm. get you a bag, get you a free membership. So get there you go. It. Awesome. Get yeah. it. Yeah. So I want to talk about a subject today that is mm-hmm. a little sobering, but okay. I think it's important. And that is grieving, the grieving process. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think so many people, when they hear grieving, they automatically jump to a death, mm-hmm. that you're grieving the death of someone. That's what I would think, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But, you know, people grieve a lot of other things. It's mm-hmm. really about loss. It's not about death. Right. So it could be the loss of a career, a loss of a home, a loss of a marriage. It mm. could be anything that's important to you that you've lost. You're going to go through that grieving process. And I think often when somebody dies, you realize you're doing that and there are mm-hmm. different steps. True. And that you work your way through it. But I'm not sure people think about that with these other losses. Right. And if you don't give them an outlet, no matter how painful it is, that's very detrimental. Could do some major damage. Right. Major damage, right. So um, some of the common reactions to grieving that you're probably used to hearing about are loneliness or mm-hmm. isolation, wanting mm-hmm. to be away from people. Yeah. Um, Another one that maybe you don't hear quite as often is a loss of control of your thoughts and feelings. So Mm -hmm. that makes you almost feel like you're going crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't control your emotions. You can't control the situation. Mm -hmm. It's it's very frustrating for a lot of people. Especially those that like to feel like they're, and I think most people prefer to have a sense of control in their their daily lives. And security. And and that can definitely be detrimental. Um, It's very common to have difficulty concentrating. Mm And of course, anxiety or fear is very normal. Sure. sure. Um, irritability, frustration. Mm-hmm. And another can be um, lethargy or general exhaustion, where you just need to rest, you know? Right, right. No, yeah, it can, you're worn out, you're worn down from all the <laughs> anxiety, loneliness, mm-hmm. all of mm-hmm. the above aforementioned things. Yeah. And all that, those emotional things can affect you physically also Mm -hmm. so you really need to be aware of them and and pamper yourself a little bit i think it's that's one of the things i really want to get across is you need to take care of yourself when you're in that grieving process you need to eat properly it's very important to keep your body healthy and strong Mm -hmm. um to try to sleep well which is you know sleep difficulty is very common with grieving and so i know that sounds like a hard one but if you can find ways to get some good sleep that is very healing for your body and your mind well you know it's amazing that you bring that up because uh you don't really think about how much it's possible for you to grieve or mourn and what because i mean for example we lost uh kobe bryant not this sunday but the sunday before and um i mean i wasn't particularly like a kobe bryant fanatic or anything like that but i even had a sense of grief i mean i don't know kobe bryant he's just he was just a part of my life as a you know growing up mm-hmm. and it was amazing what you know losing losing him did and i mean he's no, he's, re- he's retired he's no longer playing right. the game it's just it's just it's amazing what, what can actually cause you to have a have a grieving mm-hmm. process and it can be over really anything not just a i mean this one in particular was a death but it wasn't right. of like a close family member or something like that and, but you know you're right you can lose the capability you could have a health issue and lose the capability of doing something and that yes. can have a grieving process um like you said lose your marriage lose your job lose all of these other types of things and that's going to cause you to grieve or mourn and go through these steps here that um, that that can, as I've said two or three times already, be detrimental to, mm-hmm. to your well-being. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. So, um, you know, do something kind for yourself, whether that be take some time to be alone and read a book you wanted to read. Um, you know, go get a manicure, a pedicure, go get a massage, which 
can be wonderful when you're going through that process because you get so tense and your mm -hmm. muscles get so sure. tight and sure. that can really help you feel a lot better. So do something to indulge yourself. And of course, sometimes it's so overwhelming you can't deal with it yourself. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to seek professional help and you know, ask somebody, whether it be a psychiatrist, a minister, a counselor, anybody who's who's qualified to deal with grieving, be sure to reach out to them. Yeah. Well, and I mean, talk, I mean, I know that it's not necessarily seeking professional help, but talk to somebody. Oh, yeah. I mean, Just sometimes being able talk, to talk with somebody speak, close. Speak yeah. to somebody about whatever it is that you're going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically a close personal friend. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself have that person that I go to about every, he's my best friend. Um, and he's been my best friend since third grade. And we can talk to each other about, I, heck, I can, I can go to him with any problem at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I go to him before I go to my own wife <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. If you have, I mean, if you have that person, if you have a person like that, utilize it because they, I mean, they, it's, it's a resource for you. And I know that that sounds kind of weird to use your best friend as a resource, but that's what best friends are for. Absolutely. Go and, and if it helps, if it, it's, if it still doesn't help, then perhaps seek professional help. I'm not, I'm by no means a professional, <laughs> but it's, those are some options for sure. Right. And I think also if you, um, if you can reach out to somebody who's affected like you have been, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if, um, in the case of a death, you know, generally there are other people around that are affected by that also. Right. So if other people are affected by the same tragedy, mm -hmm. you know, really lean on each other and help each other, support each other. Well, I mean, think about the reason why culturally speaking, I don't know how it is. I'm sure that funeral process is, for, is kind of similar, fairly similar throughout different cultures. But in, at least in our culture, I mean, if you notice, there's a reason why we have funerals mm -hmm. during death time and during the time of a death and a lot of times just the funeral in and of itself is very cathartic yes. and very helpful so why i mean don't don't hold a funeral for something if you like lose your job or something like that <laughs> no. but i mean you can you can simulate something similar yeah. to something uh, symbolic yeah something symbolic where you're having conversations where you're able to open up and feel completely vulnerable with somebody and just have a conversation mm -hmm. yeah. But all in all, even though it is it is a very difficult and often very hurtful process, remember that it is healing. Even though you're going through those things, you're going to come out on the other side and yes. you're going to be okay. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. that's the most important thing, yep. I think. Yep. So Just be proactive. Don't let it get to where it's a, a big problem. A big, big problem. And then the sooner you get on something, the, the easier it is and the less uh, the less damage it does. Mm -hmm. So do it now. Mm -hmm. So I know that was kind of a heavy topic, but nothing wrong with heavy sometimes. Yeah, nothing wrong yeah. with heavy. So next week, mm -hmm. Lori's going to join me. Awesome. Which I'm excited about. Awesome. She's taking my job. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> just for just for one episode, okay. right. and I'm hoping um, Patricia Laramie, which some of you may know, mm -hmm. who is a, a CNA instructor, and mm -hmm. she's written a lot of the books they use in the curriculum for sure. CNA training. Sure. So a lot of people know her. I hope we're going to have her on next week Excellent. also. So. Excellent. That's mm -hmm. great. So that's our plan for next week. Awesome. So you all have a wonderful day. And until next time, peace out.